Hey there friends, pals, homies, buddies. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you advanced stabilization techniques that not only let you, you know, take this and stabilize it, but also add in visual effects on top. The markers can also be removed and uh, yeah, super easy. So let's get right into it. Now. Um, oh, oh, okay, so here we have some footage. It's rather glorious footage in this case, and I guess step one is gonna be tracking it. To do this, open up the movie clip editor, and fun trick, you can actually just take your footage and just drag it in right here. Boop, that's a fast importing. Couple things to make sure of this frame rate right here, which is the frame rate of your footage. Make sure that that is matching with the frame rate of the project. And then also in the render tab, go to color management and set this to standard because for some reason, Blender does not have this by default. Also, last thing, I like to enable normalize just so the tracking goes a bit easier. And now comes the fun part of tracking literally every single dot. Advanced users will already know what to do, so you just go ahead and do that. And for beginner users, here's what's up. You're gonna zoom into your footage on any dot that you wanna track, hold control and click to add a tracker. This box is called the pattern area. And if you hit Alt S, you can also see the search area where basically we are tracking this box, making sure that it stays inside the bigger box. Alt right arrow and Alt left arrow will track forwards and backwards respectively. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of settings here like the tracking type, but these settings are relevant at least for this project, and it gets us further from our goal of really bad face swaps and blunder, so let's just continue onwards. Cool, we've now done our tracking, and we want to move this information into the 3D viewport, and here is how you do that. First of all, you're going to select all the trackers with A, then go to Reconstruction, Link Empties to Track, and you're going to see this is going to make a whole bunch of trackers that we can actually see when we go to the 3D viewport. They're all tied into the camera, and what you want to do is take this camera and reset it so that all the trackers are on the floor, so that when we actually see this, everything's nice and organized, and just a quick tip, select all your empties and with the center set to individual origins you can make these empties very very tiny which is going to be useful for the next step which is going to be again making our geometry so the question becomes what is the point of making this geometry i mean that's a good question and in the same way that a single tracker can be used to stabilize footage or two trackers can be used to also stabilize for rotation and scale we can generalize this idea to a very abstract kind of wavelength where geometry can stabilize a multiple affine type transformation in other words we've taken world space which is very variable and transformed it into a steady constant UV space where it's easier to work with. Okay, cool. To actually do this, what you're going to do is add in a mesh and add in a single vert. If you do not see this option, make sure you have the extra objects add-on enabled. And with snapping set to vertex mode, this is just going to make it easier. We can move it to the first empty, duplicate to the second empty, and you're just going to fill this in for the rest of the trackers. Cool trick, if you take three vertices and click F, you actually get a triangle, and we can keep using this trick to triangulate the rest of the surface, so keep going until you've filled in the entire mesh. And a trick to make this a bit faster is you can select all these vertices, run a convex hull command, and this just kind of gets you started with the triangulation. And of course, the next problem is going to be is that this geometry is not moving with our footage. I mean, why would it? We didn't actually link the information to our trackers, so here is how you do that. You're going to pick a vertex on your mesh, for example, this one, and then control click the corresponding empty, so that we can then hit control control H to hook and then hook to selected object, which makes it so that then this vertex is actually moving along with this empty. And then of course we just repeat this for the rest of the empties until the entirety of our mesh is being tracked with the information from the empties. As you probably guessed, our choice of UV map is actually pretty important, especially considering that we can choose a bunch of different variations, and whichever one we end up choosing when we draw on it, it effectively goes back to tracking on the original footage, so it makes sense to pick one that is easy to work with. Now, luckily for us, the most convenient UV map we can use also happens to be the easiest one to make, so once you have finished doing your tracking, just go to the UV editing workspace, select all the vertices, hit U, hit unwrap, and then we can just adjust this so it's kind of sitting more nicely in the UV space, and yeah, you pretty much did it. You can put whatever you want now in your material and it's going to be tracked onto the geometry because of the way this method works. Just a bit of a bonus, do you remember that Drew Grills video from a while ago where he used AI to close his mouth? Well, this method is a lot better, faster, and uh, yeah, I don't know, just a bonus.